Today I'm going to talk about an injector mechanism to get parts out of a deep cavity. Welcome to another episode. So typically when you have an injection mold and you have a deep cavity or you have some parts uh, of the mold that uh, the plastic tends to grab onto, you use ejector pins uh, like these. Uh, Ejector pins are hardened, uh, they're very hard, and so therefore typically you have to grind them to length. And some ejector pins are stepped down, but they're usually quite long like this. Actually, these are the short ones. When I'm working on a manual injection mold, I don't have a lot of space. You know, it it's, uh, needs to fit within the clamp of machines like this, and there's limited clamping. So I would need to uh, shorten this ejector pin to probably something like uh, just this length here. And again, I'd have to grind it. And grinding it so it's just the right length so you get the minimum witness mark. Uh, in other words, you don't want the ejector pin to be proud or underneath the surface. You want it to be right on the surface. Getting it right on the surface is really, really hard. So as a result of that, you're going to get a witness mark left behind. Now, I have a uh, part that I'm working on where the uh, the person who wants the mold uh, didn't really want to have ejector pin marks. Um, he wanted to have something fairly smooth. He's going to laser mark uh, on the back of the, the part uh, with a, a laser cutter. And so what I wanted to do is to come up with a fairly simple mechanism to eject a, the deep, deep part. And I've been in communication with Richie Manning from Manning Innovations, and he gave me an idea that is a really uh, simple idea. And uh, it turned out to be not that difficult to implement in a fairly small mold. So let's uh, head to the computer, and I'll show you the mechanism that he described to me. I'm going to try a different mechanism, and the mechanism is one where there's an insert that can be pushed out to push the part away from the bottom of the mold, and that is usually enough with just pushing it a short distance to be able to release the part. So the way this works is I'm going to have a screw that goes into the back here as well as the spring. So the spring will hold this into place when we start to inject the plastic, and then when you push on the, the back of the screw, the spring won't be strong enough so you can't push against it but it will allow you to eject the part. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make this insert. This is a piece of one half inch scrap that I had sitting around and I have it a long way in the vise as you see so that it clamps better. But unfortunately I have the part on the opposite side from the camera so you can't see it very well. The first step is to rough out the part with a quarter inch end mill. And then after roughing out the part, it does a surfacing of the flat areas. Once it finishes the surfacing of the flat areas, I come in with a one quarter inch ball end mill to finish the sloped areas, which have a 10 degree draft on them. So I want to make sure that I pick up that draft and it's very smooth so that it slides on the other part of the mold fairly easily. Here it's going to uh, spot drill and then drill the hole that's going to be topped for the 1030 second screw. And one of the favorite things for me to watch on this machine is going to be the next operation. Right here, where it does the rigid tapping. It's just, I just love this. Um, and it's so much easier than hat and tapping. Oops, I forgot. First it has to bore the hole to size and now it's doing the rigid tapping. I just love watching that. I could watch that all day. Since this uh, was such a small piece I found that it was a lot easier to just use the bandsaw to cut this off the end. There we go. This is a new face mill I got called a tri-cutter. It's a two inch diameter face mill and it does a beautiful job. I'll have more about this in a future video.
I use this set of holes for two purposes. One is to have a pocket for the the dowel pins that align the two halves, and it's uh, finishing the diameter of the dowel pin holes here. And then the second thing was uh, threaded holes on the back side, which is threading here right now with rigid tapping, to attach this to the back part that will have the spring mechanism. This is a, using a 0.05 inch diameter ball end mill, which is a extra long reach. So I can uh, make the wall smooth, uh, but also to cut some of the details that uh, are hard to get to uh, without a small diameter cutter, and also fairly deep into the mold. So I was originally thinking about putting this back in the, the mill and somehow fixturing this and then cutting this off. But then I remembered that there's a straight section here that is quite a bit wider than this blade. So I can simply uh, cut that section off with the saw here and then I can put this in, as you'll see, into the mold and then mill it down in place. Okay, that got uh, pretty hot, so I'm going to let this uh, cool off for a minute. So you can see right there the shinier part is the straight section that is going to be removed. And so that worked just fine. And let me get the mold that I just finished and show you how this fits into that. And so this should slide right into there. Like so. And then this uh, will hold it, in, hold it in place uh, in the back. And there's going to be another piece of metal on here that will hold it in place. And then what I can do is push it out like this and there will be a spring to hold it in place. What I need to do now though is uh, fixture this in place so that this is held firmly in place so that I can mill this again uh, and get the bottom perfect so that there will, this will be completely flush and there will be very little discernible difference between the insert and the mold itself. All right, I'm going to take the insert and put it in here and then I want to secure it from the back so that it's tight enough so that I can mill it uh, flat. And I have this stack of washers that will fit onto this uh, screw so that it's slightly thicker than from the edge of the screw here to the land or whatever it's called there. So I'll go ahead and put that on like so. And then uh, screw it in from the back. And then give it a good, uh, not too much because I don't want to strip out the, uh, the threads, but that should be tight enough so that it stays in place and I can put it back into the mill and uh, mill this flat. All right, I've got it back in the vise, uh, so I'll tighten it down in place here. And then what I want to do is pick up the, uh, the back left edge again. Alright, so as I said, I want to pick up this back left edge. So I have a long reach, uh, 1 16th inch uh, end mill in here. And so what I want to do is uh, switch to uh, one that is not uh, quite so delicate. Um, because I'm going to be pulling that end mill out and uh, replacing it. So T1. Okay, so I'm going to take this out. And then I want to make sure that it has the same exact orientation as uh, before, before I put the hymer in. So I'm going to press uh, orient spindle and this may turn. No, it didn't turn, so that's good. And then I'll put the hymer in. And then uh, pick up that corner. So I'm now changing it to uh, moving it by one thousandth of an inch at a time, as you can see, and then one ten thousandth of an inch. And then I want to get it just so. 
and so I'll go ahead and uh, set that as the the left side of the part and then back it off switch to one thousandth of an inch so I can back it off faster I want to make sure I don't break the Heimer so I'm careful to not move it by too much at a time so go back to Y bring it in one thousandth of a time and then switch to one ten thousandth of an inch okay that is just so and I'll say part zero okay now I can back it away and then I can lift it up all right, it's uh, time to assemble it now that I have the back done. Here's the spring that I'm going to use. It's a pretty cool spring. It's actually three layers. And uh, I think it's about four pounds uh, to compress it all the way. So I'm going to take this off because I don't need this anymore. I need the shoulder bolt, but not the, uh, the washers. Okay, so I'm going to take put that aside for a moment and then assemble this part. So you make sure I have them. Yes, that's the correct orientation. Okay, what's going on here? These are supposed to be 1032 screws. Okay, so I think what I need to do is, is uh, just uh, chase these holes with... Uh... Oh, I see what happens. Uh, looked like it may not have threaded all the way through, so I'm just going to chase this with uh, a tap and then come back. Okay, so I got out my tap wrench. Yeah, and I can feel it's cutting the, uh, the threads. So I'm, when I set up the, uh, the program to cut the threads, I apparently did not set it to go all the way through. That does it. So make sure I have it oriented correctly. I have uh, left one surface uh, not milled yet, so that's how I, how I know the orientation. So that means I can put that into there. Now it should go in, which it does. Now what, there's a little bit of wiggle, so I'm going to put it this way and use the surface of the table to line them up. Okay. And then we can put the insert into here, put the spring on the bolt. Now I can tighten this. And yeah, that works well. I think I might uh, do a little bit more preload on it. Um, which I can do, I think, with, uh, well, I think it should be okay. I'll try it this way. No, it needs a little bit more preload. Um, so one of the things that I meant to do is not mill it quite as deep as I did. Wait a minute. Yeah. I meant to, to mill it not quite as deep as I did so that I would have more preload. Um, so I think I might try a washer in there and see how that does. Uh, actually, I've got some other springs. I think I'll try putting one of those in there. So I've got these wavy springs. Uh, 
like so, which are about uh, 1.75 pounds. Okay, yeah, that works very nicely. So now it, it uh, seats down really well, and I can push it out uh, from the back nice and easily. So, that's a win. Today I'm going to be using this injection molding machine, which is the very first machine that I purchased. I've had this machine for probably 15 years, uh, I'm not sure exactly, but it's a fairly simple machine. It has a manual clamp and then it has a pneumatic uh, injection. You can see a rectangular witness mark left by the insert. So, as I was mentioning earlier, it's really hard to get uh, inserts or ejector pins or various other things to line up perfectly. It turns out in this case that kind of acts as a frame for the marking that he's going to put in here with the laser cutter. As you saw, this ejection mechanism was actually not that difficult to implement, and by using the 10 degree angle, on the insert, uh, it seats very nicely, but it also doesn't stick uh, because the angle is enough. And the other thing is, um, you know, if I had a little bit more space, I might have wanted to use a larger angle because uh, larger than 10 degrees would give better resistance to the, uh, the pressure of injection. And, and my theory is, which I haven't tested, that uh, having a larger angle means that, you know, as a result of the injection pressure, the insert is not going to move as much, which means I can get less of a witness mark. But that's something I'm going to have to test in a future video. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Please give me a thumbs up, subscribe, comment below, and I'll see you next time.